Hi, everybody. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the Drink and Draw podcast. I am Ben, your sort of host moderator, chat doorman guy. And with me tonight is the illustrious, the one, the only Dan Pinosian, uh, who you know from his very, very long career in comics where he has worked on many a project, most recently uh, his self written and drawn slots, as well as many covers uh, on Marvel and DC and other imprints. And also Jeff Johnson, uh, who you know has worked for years as well in the comic industry on uh, such projects as Wonder Man, Green Lantern, Young Justice, and is right now working on a new Harley Quinn cartoon uh, with Warner Brothers, as well as a book for Image uh, called Rogue's Kingdom. Hi, so, everyone. Hello, gentlemen. David Johnson is somewhere out lost in Europe. Ah, good riddance. You know, it's it's probably better that he's there for all of us and all of them. Should be a smoother, you know, live stream, I'm I'm guessing. You know, it's it's easier without Dave. There's no yeah. doubt about it. I mean, democracy is probably gonna be better if he's yeah. in the country. <laughs> yeah. Now if we well, if Jeff doesn't have a microphone issue and I don't have a camera issue, oh wait, this could, oh my goodness. Oh well, hey. and now our special guest of the evening has joined us. Hello. Hi. Hi guys. Hey Satine. Hi. I missed an email. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Hi Satine. I was I've been sitting here, I'm like, reload, reload. Oh uh, I that you actually sent it and I missed it. But hi guys, how's it hi. going? I'm so happy you could make it. This is so cool. Yeah. Satine's a Satine was old school uh, drink and draw back in the day um, at Casey's and even before then probably. Do you remember um, what the the first the first time you showed up at drink and draw was? Oh God, that was probably 2012. Yeah. I probably showed up with David Mack. He basically introduced me to all you guys, and I was like, I get to hang out with the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> we should give a little background for everybody um, if they're not familiar with Satine, even though she's. You know, she's got what, like 50,000 Twitter followers. And um, if no you know idea. Dungeons and Dragons, you know who she is. Exactly. I'm the community manager of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I love that. I'm so <laughs> jealous. You are the representative <laughs> of Dungeons and Dragons. That's yeah. so cool. That is actually, oh, man. <laughs> I have That's to say, awesome. Satine, I got major props the other day with, um, with a bunch of millennials because uh, uh, I said I was going to do a live podcast or live uh, YouTube thing with you. And they're like, oh, who's that? I'm like, oh, she she has Maze Arcana. They're like, oh. oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I got props. Cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot has happened in the last couple of years. You yeah. guys all moved away. Well, I'm still here. I'm in LA. Here. I just I just hide. I'm in like you a little hide. cave. <laughs> like a troll. No, you are not a troll. <laughs> what is all that cool artwork on your wall? Oh, there's that... a bunch of Ralph Bakshi prints here of like wow. uh, Fire and Ice, Love it. Uh, The Hobbit, Wizards. There's some uh, Christine Wu and Zoe Milk over there. Nice. Let's see, wow. yeah, I kind of absorb, I just am surrounded by art. That's awesome. One of my friends made me a Dalek fighting a Batman, which is awesome. What? Yeah, there's Fine. a Louis Royo behind me. There's a bunch of David Max around here. But yeah, I have like, a bunch yeah. of the Lewis Roy sketchbooks. Those are amazing. <gasps> I have not seen those. Oh, he's great. Yeah. Jeff, what are you drawing there? Right now I'm doing, since last week, you gave away a, uh, a really badass James Bond drawing. Which um, still that, hasn't been sent, by the way. Just here. <laughs> Trust me, no one's, yeah. no one's surprised. Um, I'm going to do a D&D uh, &D, uh, fighter character. Yes. There we go. So, and then we'll uh, we'll give it away to whoever can answer whatever question Satine might have. Uh, some I'm hoping some obscure, really cool, um, esoteric Dungeons and Dragons question that you can't just look up online. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm sure you have uh -huh. one. I do. I have one. Should I ask it now? Oh no! Wait. Wait till the end. Okay, because I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. You're ready wait, with the esoteric wait, wait questions. Till I, wait till the drawing is done, and then then ask the question, so uh -huh. people can be super excited about maybe winning this great drawing. Yeah. Is it you? Is it looks a little bit like you. That's like an idealized Jeff Johnson there. Yeah. Well, all all Jeff Johnsons are idealized. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, team, didn't you host a? It was kind of like a drink and draw, but it was like a life drawing um, thing at Meltdown of your own. Yeah, that um, was a uh, draw melt. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was. Like, you were Kevin on it. Would show up. And, you would show up. Yeah, yeah I'd show up. <laughs> yeah, actually, that one's recorded. I don't know where it is. Justin from X. XLN. It was yeah. a really long time ago. But yeah, they let me play in their podcasting booth. And it was originally, it was a bunch of artists hanging out drawing. Mm -hmm. That was pretty yeah. cool. I miss those different days. models. Yeah. yeah. Lauren, Lauren was the model um, quite often. Yeah. I love her. She's pretty, pretty She's got a good she face. Yeah, yeah. She does. That was a good space. Yeah, we were very lucky to have that much room. <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of really cool stuff went on at Meltdown. Like there was a lot of uh, role playing and comedy and art. And uh, we had a bunch of gallery shows there. It was a good spot. Yeah, yeah I ran maybe. the Dungeons and Dragons group uh, over there. So that was D&D uh, &D Melt. And then there was Draw Melt. So I was there three days a week for many years. Wow. wow. <laughs> I love Meltdown. Yeah. It's just this like nice place where everyone got to like be themselves. I think there's little rumors and murmurings that there might, something might happen with Meltdown. Gaston's always up to something. Yeah, he's always, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just he, he would be like a wizard. He, what character would he be, a druid or a wizard or? Oh, he's definitely a wizard noble. Yeah, oh, noble. <laughs> or a, a merchant, noble merchant. She had that figured out. Yeah. That. <laughs> ben, you've never played Dungeons and Dragons and you've never seen a, a dice, any dice that isn't six-sided. So like if someone showed you a four-sided dice or a 20-sided dice, your head might explode. Is this correct? I, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I, I had- <laughs> Okay, good. I was gonna have to throw down some dice. I know, geez. Really <laughs> but uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not uh, not a regular of D&D for any uh, stretch of the imagination, but I know what a 20-sided die is. What type of character would you be, Ben? Um, uh, I believe I'm chaotic neutral. Maybe. Huh. That's, that, that's not quite getting, a character. That's, that's a, a character. That's, that's a good beginning, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, like are we, you from, are, Satine, are you from the old school where um, do you, everybody has to roll their own characters before you guys play, or do you create the characters for, or whoever the dungeon master is creates all the characters for everybody? Because um, I know you host like some awesome celebrity D and D, you know, games. Yeah, I do so much. I play so many different kinds of games. I went over to Han Cholo's and we ran a Rick and Morty Dungeons and Dragons. And that was an hour, 45 minutes, which is like what? speed gaming. Yeah. And then this Tuesday, I ran Dungeon mm -hmm. of Doom, which is the Dwarven Forge. So this company does mini terrain. The guy's name is Stefan Picorni. He created Dwarven Forge and he's a classically trained artist and sculptor but he puts all of his energy in the most amazing mini terrain, like super three-dimensional sculpted. Oh, yeah. So, and that one went four hours and one of them had pre-made characters. One of them, I let them pick and mm -hmm. I'm old school though. I've been playing oh, for 30 years. So is this old school, like original um, AD&D rules or no. are you adopting all the uh, brand new volumes? Yeah, I mean, basically uh, fifth edition is just the evolution of Dungeons and Dragons. So through every single edition, they've upgraded and upgraded and upgraded. And now we've upgraded to simplification, less math, more playing. Oh, mm. I like that. Yeah. My wife would appreciate that. Cause I've tried to get her into the idea of it. But the, every time I talk to her about like, Oh, and then you roll to see if you hit the minus armor class. And blah, blah, she, now she you, just, yeah, no. she, she just tunes out. Yeah, so the way I'm, I'm the gateway, by the way, in case you're wondering, you want yeah. a gateway to get your wife into D and D? I'm right here. Excellent. So <laughs> basically, you it's there's a character sheet, and there are numbers on the character sheet, and some of the numbers tell you the kind of skills you're really good at. Some of them say what your weapons do, but really, you tell me what you want to do, and I'll tell you where to look on the character sheet. Wow, that's very helpful. Well, yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's not like the DMs I used to have who were trying to kill me. Nope, you know, we don't play like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. My dad used to kind of make fun of me. Like he'd make fun of me with everything I did. Like if I was in the like Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, or whatever, he'd he'd make fun of the little race cars and um oh, Pinewood Derby. Yeah, he would he would be <laughs> on that. And then uh when I started playing Dungeons and Dragons, um he'd walk by, but he'd put like a brown robe over his head. Um <laughs> like he was a, a monk or something <laughs> like that. And just all my friends would get like, Oh god, what's with your dad? 
but you know, your dad's not a pretty funny. Not That's a friendly cute. man. No. It was cute though. It was right. I mean, <laughs> he could have told me, oh, go, go chop some wood or, you know, he could you know, but no, he, he didn't he discourage it. Uh, well, he discouraged it a little bit. Yeah, didn't he? Yeah. It sounds discouraging. Yeah. I mean, he would tell me that, you know, it's not terribly manly. But then Doesn't again, look, he... Josh Barnett plays Dungeons and Dragons and um, Joe Manganello. Uh, yeah. A bunch of WWE guys. Yeah, I think they're pretty manly. Xavier. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Plus, you're a barbarian. And um, yeah. totally. so He's Joe cool. has this axe, much like that axe, uh -huh. that was made for him in real life. And at his birthday party, they brought it. He has a Dragonborn character. And they brought it out as a cake. And he took that axe and he just started hacking at his cake oh. with his oh. giant axe, which is very sharp and like a real axe. Oh, <laughs> Has like a giant bone on the end, like a big giraffe bone. That sounds like wow. an excellent party. Jeez. It was. Where it was like parties? a big. Jeff and I are just at bars drinking and drawing and playing with our little, you know, pencils and little <laughs> land yeah. things like that. We're not hacking things. Oh, I no, was... this was even better. This was um, a bunch of 30, 40, 50 year old people at a birthday party. And the birthday party was four hours of everyone sitting at tables playing Dungeons and Dragons at three different tables. That sounds like hmm. good times. Plus food. What's yeah, you you're like, we're 12 again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What was your favorite old school drink and draw, or not drink and draw, but Dungeons and Dragons beverage? Okay, I come from the Jolt Cola era. Nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's and that, that was the first label edition. <laughs> what a logo. I mean, I mean, twice the caffeine, four times the sugar. Wasn't that the ad? <laughs> Something oh, like right, that. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be illegal. Yeah, every kid should have that. It was. I mean, that's why they stopped. It was actually honest, is what it yes. was. Right, right. Yeah, one <laughs> one half the cocaine, two times the. Yeah, that was. Um, yeah, and plus, like that's the thing. So I did a European tour last year. I'm doing another one this year, where I go to different countries and then talk to the people in the community. And I must have recorded 50 interviews, and everyone was the same. They play D and D at home with their friends or at a game store and mm. they all bring food and they eat all the junk food, chips, oh. um, French fries, pizza, cookies, candy. There's like one or two people who had healthy snacks, but pretty much it's the same all across the globe for decades. Yeah. Right. Right. Not a lot of people are just chewing on carrots. And... No. Well, if you're going to role play, who wants to role play eating carrots? You could be Bugs Bunny, Jeff. <laughs> That's not, you, know? you too could be Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah. you could. But if I'm Bugs Bunny, I'm going to eat cake. <laughs> That's true. Carrot yeah. cake. Carrot cake. Yeah, Once absolutely. my friend, I told my friend, I'm like, look, I'm not eating grains. So he made me a cake made out of watermelon and frosting. Oh, that sounds delicious. It was wow. amazing. I'm in it for the frosting. Yeah, wow. that's all the best parts. <laughs> ben doesn't eat too much. I think he just, his diet is primarily uh, liquid, oh, right? Oh, and grief. Uh, I thought, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was artist nails. diet. Yeah, mine is today is a um, little tequila. I'm still out of whiskey, so cheers, Jeff. What are you actually drinking? Uh, in honor of Satine and Dungeons and Dragons, I went and found um, this. It's yes. dragon's milk. Wow! Nice. God. Yeah. That's actually a good, that's a good friend, Satine. It's a delicious 11 point, yeah, it's good beer. I just can't stop trying to think of how they would get that milk. It would be pleasant. <laughs> Carefully. You, I mean, you, right, lose like, hit, you lose some hit points. You're going to have to roll a 20, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. About a couple times. Yeah. Okay, roll a 20 again and again. I'm yeah. drinking. Yeah, what do you got? Are you drinking? I am drinking coffee, but it's not just any coffee. It's just coffee. Oh. It's just coffee. It's called just coffee. Yeah, and it, I think it was brewed last week. Or, I mean, it was made like it was packaged and made. It's super fresh. It's the most fresh, and it's oh. like rocket fuel. Have oh, you ever times. tried? Now I know you're you're. I'm draw. I'm going to draw your um your character, who I I I can pronounce the first name, but I can't pronounce the second part of her name. <laughs> um, but there's a blue cat. Now, have you ever had the um? The cat coffee, which is basically made from no. cat poo. Nope. No, no, it's not it's from cat. I mean, it's, well, yes, Jeff, it is. Out, no, it is. The, it is, Jeff. They it shit is. out the coffee beans. and then It's they, not just cat poo, though. There is coffee in it. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. wrong. <laughs> I, I have boundaries. I've got like three boundaries. And that's so you wouldn't, you wouldn't eat... Um, no. 
cat no, is it, no, shits it's coffee? A, no, no, mm-hmm. it's a terrible idea. <laughs> I might. I might try I want, it. You might yeah, try you, it. <laughs> yeah, listen. I mean, people Dan, are making it. I wouldn't pay for it. Like if Dan's not. Said, you're, you're, a terrible, you're a terrible judge of what to eat or what not to eat. Well, that not, is 100% true. I yeah, really want you to do it, though. I've watched okay. him eat a candy bar out of the garbage once. I've beaten worse out of the garbage. <laughs> if, I, if I'm at a hotel, if I'm at a hotel and, you know, people are done with their, their food oh, that they just got. Yeah. And they leave it in the in the thing. And I'm coming back from an evening oh, yeah. out. Probably I was studying or, uh, you know, sure. at a convention just talking to my friends in yes. the library. Frank. And I'm and I'm on my way back to my room, and I see some delicious food. I'm gonna eat it. I do too. Yeah, especially San Diego Thank Comic you. Con. It's what I do. Late right? night, it's so much better. Yeah, it is. I'm like, you did not eat that. Everybody gets fifty dollar like, burger. I'm like, right. we're all yeah, we're all <laughs> brothers and sisters on this planet. We're right. all you know. And if I'm drunk, I don't care. I want exactly. food. Right, a exactly. chicken Caesar, it, it doesn't matter. Like, well, no, I'm not gonna eat a salad. <laughs> no, but if I, I see yeah, like I'm a Dan here. Yeah, um, if I see some cake or some cookies or usually burgers uh, or a burger, yeah, some fries. If it, I check to see if they're warm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> right, right. <yeah. laughs> I'm not kidding though. I actually do do that if I drink I at too. conventions. Yeah, That's you're awesome. not the only one. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your fans are like, oh, gross. You get like, gross. You get like three, three unfollows. No, oh, <laughs> she's so put together online. Now she's yeah. just a mess. <laughs> Um, we all eat garbage when we have to. Yeah. <laughs> Just not cat My, my wife's, yeah, my not, wife's not a garbage. fan of, of any of that. Um, so we Surprise. might have a, a special guest also who uh, I'm very curious to see if he's interested in Dungeons and Dragons. It's um, my buddy uh, Joe Casada at, at Marvel who, who might even have some David Mack stories. You never know. And then he could kind of use it as like blackmail on, on David. Um, we'll, see, we'll, see if he, we'll see if he pops in. Um, he's usually drawing and he's always drawing something that he can't talk about, which is not cool. But he has the best Dan stories that, that of anyone oh, I know. It's so embarrassing because he's known me since I was, I was 21. I, he's known me longer than you have, Jeff. It's impressive. Yeah. They were still friends. Have, yeah. That's, that's what see, I'm talking about. You guys are the cool kids and I've met, dozens of celebrities and they don't make me squee like with nervousness but anytime i meet artists i'm just like oh my god do you get do you get nervous around uh some cabbage no he is so welcoming and hugs and kisses and all of those things he is super sweet but i'm such a fanboy when i when i think of him (laughs) i'm like i I actually get get super nervous yeah Yeah. (laughs) he just does Uh what he does with a piece of paper and a pencil is so different than what i do Oh my god! Well, anyone, yeah. what anyone it's does. so magic. It's not real. Yeah, he's Try able to, to actually. Um, sometimes he'll put the paper on Jeff's bare back and yes. start drawing. <laughs> and Jeff can feel. Ha- he's like doesn't even know. Yeah, he doesn't even know what the drawing is, but he can sense what it is based <laughs> on the lines that <laughs> Bill's doing, putting on there. It's amazing. There's power in it. Yeah, he did the third issue cover of my book. Of okay, my yeah, novel. we want to talk about that. So tell us. A little. Jeff, you actually have two signed copies, I, I hear. I do. I have the first two issues. I have not read the third one yet, and uh, I need to know what's up. They I need to... to send it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're great. They're really great issues. Like uh, One of the things I thought was really impressive about the book was not only is it like a really good action sci-fi story, but like there's some – like you do the emotional stuff really, really well. Which, Thanks, man. I, I, as someone who doesn't like, I'm better at action than the the interpersonal stuff. So whenever someone does, it, I'm like, oh, nice, nice. I actually sure. quit art school because I was like, I need to go learn about humans. Ah, <laughs> yeah, your figure work is great in there. Did you Thank use you. a lot of models? Oh yeah, they're all of our friends. Oh, cool. I think cool. Alan Amato's in it. Um, Kyle Vogt from the Room is in it. Yeah, a bunch of my friends. I like to use art reference. Is Lauren in there? She's not in that one, but oh. um, Christine Wu and Zoe Milk are the bad guys. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a, our cast. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, who's that? Is that Joe Casada? That's Joe Casada! How are you? What's up, Joe? What's going wow, on? New camera angle, Joe. Oh, I love that angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to change it up each time. I'm, just, uh, I'm having some trouble with my Cintiq, so I'm not drawing as of yet. I, it may drive me to drink, though. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, first of all, correction. It's oh, no. Not- 
cat poop coffee, okay? It's called Kopi Luwak coffee. It could be as much as $500 a pound. What? Uh, and it's what not, not eating the poop. Okay, here's, here's what happens. I know this because I actually got this coffee from a friend of mine years ago. Oh, boy. This Kopi Luwak thing, right? I'm, I'm scared. Grounds and eats the coffee beans, but they eat them whole, and then they digest them, mm -hmm. and then it comes out in their poop. Now, the real messy job are the people that have to go and gather up the coffee beans, right? And then they, they yeah. wash them off. So when you get the coffee beans, and they're, they're completely clean. And that's supposedly what makes it the most intense coffee. Because they're softer. Right. 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 What did you get anyway, so? Yeah. Ew. I, I picked up, I, had, I have cats, and I've picked up cat shit for years. I've yeah, never, but you have, a little, you have you know, those little dainty gloves of yours with his yeah, little hands, I mean, right? Have you ever I've, checked I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> feed them some coffee beans. I need to feed them some coffee beans first. Yeah, Don't make some money. It. It's a trap. Make them, <laughs> yeah, make them earn their keep. Mm. Feed them some coffee beans. I kept trying to have them do my taxes. That never worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, so Joe. Joe. How you doing? No. Just so you know, also I have a I have a dog that eats that eats uh, cat poops. So you know. Oh, it's called almond roca to dogs. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, <laughs> so gross. Have you guys ever met before? No. Hi. So I apologize. I'm going back and forth. I'm just trying to get my screen to work. But you have a crappy oh. office, though. I don't like to judge people's <laughs> offices. I don't, you know. What's wrong with my office? I don't know. I just, you know, the decorum. And... <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's amazing, Joe. It's very cool. It's just, it's just stuff. You know what I mean? It is. Just, all it is. But it's a lot of cool stuff, though. It's pretty gotta, cool. Yeah. Yeah, you have to pick stuff. That's the way to do it. Yeah, pick cool stuff is what I hear. Um, all right, I'm going to switch over because I have, this is like, I have multi-cams everywhere and I'm going to switch over to the drawing part. Let's see if it works. Oh, there's right. one. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to, oh. I've, I've sketched it out already. So <gasps> now I'm going to start doing actually a little bit of drawing here. So Dan, you're doing Satine's character. Didn't you start off by doing D and D characters when you were a kid? Wasn't that how? You that's how I learned how to draw. Business? Yeah, I learned how to draw by I had an ad in Dragon magazine, and I would no, um, yeah, because <gasps> the the books were so expensive that my parents were like, "Well, we're not we're not paying for that." I was like, "I yeah. need these books." So I went to my local comic book shop. Um, no, it was a game. I think it was just a toy store where I where I got the. Um, the um where i got the game modules and everything and and they um they put an ad they, they let me put like an, a little ad um in there and so i would i would just for like i think ten dollars i would draw somebody's character <laughs> but, that's so cool yeah yeah, but you were. Six, I mean, you made a lot of money doing that, didn't you? Buy your first car with that money? Eventually, I, I put an ad. Yeah, eventually, I put an ad in Dragon Magazine, and um, and then I started. You know, I'd come home and I'd have like three drawings to do, and I bought a car before I had a driver's license. Um, hey guys, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to have to reboot my computer. Well, I was in the middle of the story, Joe. I think you bye, might want to hear. Bye, it. Joe. <laughs> I really, I really can't. Go, Dan. You know, no, Joe, it's a really important story in I mean, about my childhood. I think that's, I, that's just that, so that, more like that. The point at the, at the end of the story. <laughs> this sorry. always happens. This is a oh, typical. I gotta typical go. Joe All right, see and you I. Soon. This is why we've remained friends. Like he actually is not a great listener. He knows when to walk away. That's a, yeah. that's a skill that takes years of practice. Yeah. Anyhow, I mean, honestly, very, though, it's very I, I have learned not to listen to Dan. Whenever he tells a story, I just mm -hmm. assume it's not true. Well, I, I do lie quite a bit. <laughs> but it's a good story. Yeah, no, it's always a good story. But I just, like, if he tells me it happened, I just start to think, like, okay, this is a, this is a metaphor. It's a, par it's a parable <laughs> of some kind. So do you guys still play at all? The um, last time I played was uh, when I left uh, Los Angeles. A friend of mine hosted a quick little game for us. And uh, I played so badly, I think I rolled, um, must have been a dozen ones. <gasps> That's my favorite. Why? So, Why would that be your favorite? It's because so, it's rolling so for awful. story, dude. Like, oh. so awful. Like if you roll low, then mm -hmm. it's like writing a comic, right? If you mm -hmm. fail, then awesome happens. I failed so many times. That's here's the thing. Life. I tried, right. I tried mm -hmm. everyone's dice. Like, 
I had rolled mine, got a one. Mm -hmm. I rolled everyone else's, kept getting ones. Eventually, no one wanted me to touch their dice. I was cursed. <laughs> so I see Steve Jones being up upset. <laughs> yes, no, Steve Jones would not let me touch his dice at all. Um, uh, I was so bad that a going away present, the friend, my friend who hosted the, the, the thing, uh, bought me these really great, these fantastic metal dwarven dice um, that I've never rolled, I've never played with. Because you're scared? Don't be scared. Well, yeah, no, I'm, scared, I'm, I am scared a little bit of ruining them. They're so cool, I don't want to taint them. You know what's funny, Jeff? And I'm going to say this. Um, you and I are friends, and you know I love Dungeons & Dragons, and you were out here, and you played a special Dungeons & Dragons thing. Where was I? I don't remember. Were you there? Tired. No, I wasn't there. That hurts. That really hurts a little I, bit. I don't remember you being there. <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't invited. Oh, it's so weird. Oh, you're, mm -hmm. oh, you're talking about this? Oh, I see. Oh, no, yeah, you... <laughs> Yeah, no, you weren't invited. There's oh, a reason. It's because because your your attitude is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, do you always play a ranger? I do. I tend to always play a half elf ranger. Wait, did you just <laughs> guess that? Well, or yeah. did you know that? No, no. I mean, Jeff and I have played together. Oh, we yeah. have played together, and also I'm very predictable. Yeah, <laughs> I know Jeff's every move. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, you always, you like to play a, a like a, a Conan style warrior. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, but yeah, I, I do. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> I think I've seen that on the internet. But... Yeah, I may like to play a Steve, old... do you have a favorite character? Yeah, the one he's drawing. She is... So I do a live stream called Sirens of the Realms, and it's an all-girl bard band. Or it was an all-girl bard band, but Jason Charles Miller is an amazing musician, so he joined us. And they perform, and they're in a band. Well, they have a band manager, which is my character, Vlanya, that Dan is drawing right now. And I made her when I was 12. Oh, so wow. A long time ago. Was that the real name that you came up with when you were 12? Yeah, because I what's kept the, What's the full that. name? Vlanya Umvara, Fate Weaver. It's an so elvish. cooler than I was at that age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, she's changed over time, but now she is, um, in 5th edition, there's Bards are cool. So there's a subclass called. I love bards. Oh, yeah. They're, they're way the best. Of course you yeah. do. Of course um, you do. There's a subclass called College of Whispers, and they're the spy masters. Wow. That sounds like yeah. a, a, a Jeff thing if there ever was one. College <laughs> of Whispers. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. And she has all these different bands. So she sends them out into the world to go adventuring. So she's kind of like the hub. So they, she sends them out as they're ostensibly performing. Mm -hmm. but they're also gathering information and having adventures. Yep. Smart. So currently the sirens are uncovering a beauty pyramid scheme where these nobles and these very evil, evil demon worshipers, um, they've created, like they're kidnapping all of these really exotic monsters and creatures and turning them into an elixir. Ben, are you intrigued now? Like now you hear so, hearing something like that, you're like, okay. I'm definitely going to be playing. Lost. So yeah. lost. <laughs> or, did, or did you nod off? Yeah. Well, it's so like that, fantasy, uh, though. The, yeah. uh, the, 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 the chat has been uh, a little all over the place, too. So I don't feel like I'm the only person that's lost out here. But uh, Dave has made an appearance from across the pond on the chat. Really? So, uh, yeah. What so country he, is he in? He's here stalking us. Um, I don't know. I don't know. He hasn't said, uh, Dave, where are you? Dave, what country are you in? Wiring minds want to know. Um, I'll tell you what I don't like is that Dave's found a new best friend over there. Yeah. You know, I'm Dave's Dave. best friend. You should fight them. Um, he I should. Think. I want to watch that. I'll fight him. <laughs> is it an art duel or a physical challenge? If yeah. it's an art duel, oh. I'm losing because it's in, in Rico yeah. Marini. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, it's game over. That guy is but, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> there's, so. no, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So, Satine, are you DMing that the the Sirens game, or are you? Is there someone else DMing it? Yeah, I'm a dungeon master. I'm. I also teach people how to dungeon master. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Don't you have a new? You have a um a new Twitch or new website called uh, Gilding Light, where you talk about storytelling and and yeah. uh, and dungeon mastering and all that stuff. It's true. This is all true. It's called Gilding Light, gildinglight.tv. And then you can go to our Twitch and our YouTube and all that. Um, brand new, started on Tuesday. But wow. it's basically a collaborative storytelling 
um, project. So I work with different people about with, in different mediums. So I have all these artist friends and I have director friends who do music videos and do short form videos. And my, some of my friends are like, let's make a comic book. Let's make a sculpture. Let's do X, Y, Z. So that's what it is. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, awesome. What I found was Dungeons and Dragons is kind of a, a really good centerpiece for storytelling. And we've been doing a lot of live streams and teaching people how to dungeon master. But I wrote a book called The Action Heroine's Journey that talks about the female's hierarchy of needs and storytelling from uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Sure. So it was really cool to explore storytelling to write books and graphic novels, but then explore it as like a very active, like, oh, okay, if this is a scenario, this is how the characters will react because this is how they react. And because I do so many conventions and play the same games over and over at conventions, you can really see what like people automatically pull to and what people kind of dismiss. So when you take that kind of story and then put it into like movies, video games or TV or, you know, those kinds of um, stories, you can, it's almost like, you're pre-screening it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So when you say that when you've done a lot of uh, the games abroad and you see how people react the same way, do people fall into personality archetypes? Can you, can you tell, like, oh, this person is going to react this way because he's, he's already chosen to be uh, a magic user or a fighter? Like, does that, is there a personality reveal in that stuff? There is actually. So it's not necessarily in what they choose, but it's in their demeanor. Mm. So maybe there's an outgoing wizard. Maybe there's a shy wizard. But, a shy um, wizard in life. Are you a shy wizard? <laughs> Dan is a very shy wizard. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So it's like everyone picks characters of these different archetypes and they play them in the game. But as a dungeon master, I see the different archetypes in the people pretending to be these other characters. So there's like multi-level. And for me as a Satine, like I don't just hear what people are saying. I feel what their intentions are. Mm -hmm. So that's like my superpower. Does it help you guide the adventure? Does it help you oh, guide yeah. like, so like if someone you can feel like what, no matter what they might be saying, you're like, mm, he really needs to find some gold right now. Oh yeah, right. I can tell. It's really cool. <laughs> um, oh, she's hmm. so beautiful. I'm having fun with this. She's very cool. Yeah, yeah, she's in a video game right now. Wow, that's that's high level. I remember, I remember always like playing Dungeons and Dragons, going, "This would be a great comic. Like, if we could just take this adventure and just make it into, you know, like a comic book, and then to hear like." your characters in a video game oh, that's oh that must be awesome <laughs> it is well yeah. there's rat queens which is dungeons and dragons yeah yeah isn't that is that's uh tess fowler no that's a darkened wish and b dave oh. walters that just came out a couple of days ago i'm very proud of them okay so how often are you doing live dungeons and dragons games it's a little bit personal Jeff. weekly <laughs> Plus, they're old friends. I can ask oh. that. Yeah. So I have the live D&D show. It was on Tuesdays. I'm on hiatus right now while everything kind of moves over to the new studio. And um, it was every Tuesday. That's a lot. But then I also have one called the Storyteller's Guide that was the Dungeon Master's Guide. Mm -hmm. So it's me, and I sit there with two other Dungeon Masters, one novice, one experienced. And we come up with adventures in 45 minutes to show people how easy it is. Do you have uh, a, a three act structure in mind when you're doing that? Do you have like a, a a heroine or hero's journey planned, or are you trying to to wing it based on the needs of the the moment? It's very much exploring how other people build adventures. So some people are storytellers, like they write novels and stuff. So they're going to approach it in a certain way. Uh, some people are comedians. They approach it in a certain way. Some people are very three act structure and they approach it in a different way. So I'm kind of showing people all the different ways you can approach making an adventure. So basically I say, here's your theme. It's pulp. It's like high pulp in the jungles levels one through four. And then they just build it, and I kind of guide them through building it. Awesome. Do you have like, do you have certain like 
it's almost like jazz then. Do you have certain notes that you plan on playing? Jesus, Jeff. No, wow. these are great. no, these are great questions. Are they? Because I don't like them. Yeah, <laughs> angry. Ah. Maybe, it's, yeah. maybe it's the tequila. Maybe it's the tequila. <laughs> sure. Sorry, Jeff, but those are pretty serious questions. I've Sorry. always been very invasive. That's my thing. Yeah. Sorry. Jeff and I are very serious when we have conversations. <laughs> I yeah, exactly. Like Listen, I take storytelling yeah. very seriously. Clearly. Sorry, <laughs> Steve. Sorry for interrupting. That's okay. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh. <laughs> I was just trying to derail Jeff. I was getting a little jealous. You know. So you're mad about my dragon's milk. Well, yeah, that started it. Like that was very that was a very thoughtful thing to have to be a subpoena to get. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I think Jeff wins a, tr a strength and draw. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of those questions. Yeah, you've know, known Jeff for a long time, right? Right, Joe? Yeah, well, he's probably working off a teleprompter, I think. I think he's got those questions he had. Well, the, the truth is, I'm a super old school DD nerd from way back in the day. And, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. and I, yeah. I've learned many life lessons from DD. &D. Oh, really? Yeah. That's real. I'm writing a book on it, actually. Oh, really? What are the life lessons that you've learned? Um, well, since actually, okay, so it's actually, here's. This is for you, Jeff. This is the super oh, deep stuff. This is for Jeff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. just so you're thinking about your D and D question, Satine. With uh -huh. the, like, this is beautiful. All right. I would want to go into battle with this person. He's he's fully armed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he is. He's and he's got armed. the guns. That's yeah, he definitely got the guns. All right. What's what were you gonna say? My book is about how Dungeons and Dragons has helped me through PTSD. Oh, right on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's very healing. There's a it's kind of the new movement right now is um, there's all these psychologists figuring ways to be very proactive and creating adventures that will help guide people for like, um, you know, somebody has Asperger's and they kind of need help socially or if they need to process things, how to be in a group and help people overcome. Sense because you have like so often, you know, like, you know, I. I Never been to a psychologist, although it's constantly I'm constantly being asked to go. I have begged him many times. You please take our advice, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you always feel like people are like being like sometimes they'll talk using a puppet or they'll talk, you know, it, it's easier for them to do things. Dan, you, you, you go see Dr. Jose Cuervo, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on, now. On a daily on a daily so, yeah. basis. <laughs> but no, I mean if you if you if you get to role play in a in a Dungeons and Dragons setting, that's kind of it's the same sort of thing, I imagine. It's kind of cool. Yeah, basically, you know, therapy is cool because it the a good therapist will ask you questions for you to answer. Mm -hmm. So rather than telling you what to do or telling you how you should feel, it's um, they ask you questions to go into your own psyche. So this is good practice for people to open up. When I have, I have a bunch of. Uh... I know Dan knows, and I'm, I'm a veteran, though I never actually, I was a, a, a reservist for a long time. Oh, really? And yeah, and so I have done a lot of stuff with um, veterans dealing with post-traumatic stress. And one of the things that I found that's been really helpful is drawing, is being able to just, stuff that they can't actually vocalize, they can draw it. And then that way they can work through the, the emotional context of it, and they can work through the feelings of it without um, having to, because when you say it out loud, it bring like for yourself, it makes it different than if you say it out loud, say if you're role playing or if you're drawing it, it makes it a lot easier to process. Yeah. Yeah. So the, a lot of the healing that they do for people with childhood trauma and also um, uh, military trauma is they get you to do group activities like stage plays or Dungeons and Dragons where you're doing cooperative things with people. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, what's the name of the book again? I am working on that. Oh, we don't have yeah. a title yet. No, I don't. <laughs> That's the hardest title. part. <laughs> All right. You know who's great at titles is Dan. Yeah, you might want me to come over and workshop it. <laughs> Dan, didn't you have a, 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 a tree character, Sequoia? Didn't you? Didn't, wasn't oh, you God, a great title? I get into that. I was, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to prank call some... Um, famous comic book writers with my um, with my ideas, and it was Sequoia. <laughs> it's one of them. I and, just remember you had a great title. Was it the Roots of Justice or the, the, the... <laughs> yeah, something like that? <laughs> it was... Yeah. Uh -oh. um, who were these writers we prank called in? 
What? Who were these? Who would I prank call? I, I don't I, think I you really should talk. I don't say. think you should it, say. It, it, it's really. <laughs> oh, what's the worst that could happen? Come on. <laughs> well, that, that's, the, that's the problem. Now, now the as, a, as a professional comic book, yeah. now I'm friends with these actual. I used to send in drawings to Marvel as Bill Sinkevich, as Frank Miller. <laughs> no, <laughs> and I just draw like real swag. Yeah, we knew. Yeah, we knew. We knew. Oh, you knew it was me? Yeah, you can always tell. You can tell a damn drawing. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. It wasn't that good, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was never. Maybe Dan was an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like That's God weird. damn it, Dan! Again with these. Again. Um. Mm. All right. Well, this thing's coming out better and better. Let's see if it. Oh, I love her. I like oh. that. So, Joe, I assume you can't tell us what you're working on. I can't. Or you just won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I really can't. I really can't. <laughs> Yeah, and you've seen it. You know what I'm working on. I'm is he actually working on anything? Or is, yeah. he, is he just sitting in front of a glowing board? And there's nothing here. Joe's <laughs> <laughs> never working on anything. It's just, uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm watching the ball game. There you go. That's smart. Um, let's see here. So, Satina, are you doing any more? It seems like you're doing a lot of, uh, Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Are you doing any more comic book stuff? No. Um, I've been actually working on comics. Dude, I drew three <laughs> times last year. What? That doesn't yeah. seem like much. It's it's not. I went from just drawing every moment of every day to three times. It's just hard with all the traveling and all the coming up with stories. So I did more writing than drawing. But this year I have vowed to more art. Good. To more art? I like yeah. that as a verb. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and as a as a lifestyle. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's really, Yeah, really I just great. drew my nephew, 16th birthday, drew his tattoo. What is it of? So he's a very sensitive artist. And his mom told all the kids, once you hit 16, you can get something as long as it's meaningful. So it's like his aunties, like both of them had breast cancer. So there's a ribbon and it's a bouquet of flowers. Oh, I thought that that's was great. And each one nice. represents like the women in his life. And I was like, man, this kid, this kid. Nice. Wow. All right, hang on just one second. Where are you going, Jeff? We're in the middle of a very important what? Yeah, delivery. Oh. <laughs> Pizza delivery. Pizza delivery. What the heck? Just drink, draw, and eat. Yeah. Always have to eat. It's true. Right. And hydrate. It's what hydrate. Are, you're what are you drinking? 11 glasses of water a day. What I'm is drinking it? water. Sorry, guys. Hmm. Your water. We have drinking and drawing laws here in New York City, so yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little stricter than uh, than uh, than you guys in LA. See, I could never drink and draw with you guys. I'm either I don't drink anymore, but it was either I'm drinking with you or I'm drawing with you. I don't know how you guys can do both of those things at the same time. I don't you know. know it takes a certain amount of. I think it's an ancestry and practice. Ancestry. Yeah, wow. I mean, if I was thirty percent Armenian, I'm sure that I could could be a, a fantastic drinker and drawer. But only Joe, you're not, you're not going to like this. You say it's so, nature. Yeah, Joe. Remember, we all thought I was fifty percent Armenian. Yeah, I guess that's not the case. What? No, no. Um, <laughs> my sister got the ancestry.com, so that side is thirty percent Armenian. The other side is twenty percent Greek. Wow, your your dad's got some explaining to do. Yeah, he, well, he's, he, he, <laughs> we no longer ask him. We're, oh, um, sorry. Yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very sensitive. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, very, <laughs> that was my dad's dad. <laughs> yeah, no, and the other part's mostly Scandinavian and Welsh, so which is useless. Mm. Well, yeah. that's that's a negative, apparently, according yeah. to yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I used to pride myself on the the fifty percent Armenian, and now I've been downgraded. No one really has to know this. You can be whatever you want to be. All right, I'm not going to tell anyone. Unfortunately, the whole world knows that. <laughs> I mean, I think we all suspected. <laughs> you know, this guy isn't 50%. He's not he's, 50% Armenian. Maybe he's, maybe he's 30. We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way he's doing all a full right. 50. Satine, should I use this tool? Yeah, man, go for it. All right, I'm going to do it. Satine, uh, so are you drawing right now? I am drawing. Can we wow. see it? Yeah. Oh, oh awesome. cool. Try, try that again. That's it. Yeah, let's see it. Dun, 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 dun. There you go. Was it an iPad? What is that? What are you drawing on? Yeah, I started using the iPad. Um, it's pretty beautiful because I have a Cintiq upstairs. But um, 
I can draw anywhere. Not that do, I have been. So you like the you like the digital stuff? I I like this because it's as close to traditional as I can get digitally. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like it's really sensitive with Procreate and Auto Autodesk, I believe. It's like Does it still feel like the ink? I like I, the ink. I have a hard time. Like I like I still like the resistance that paper gives you. I work on uh, my Cintiq all day doing cartoons. And it's it just always feels like drawn on glass. Like I yeah. can't. There's it's too. Uh, I just don't feel like I don't feel like there's a connection between me and the the thing. So it's always super mechanical for me. There's a new. Um, I heard there's a new thing for Procreate where you can actually put the screen on the um, on the uh, on the uh, iPad and it has a paper feel. Really? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. Film. You can buy it, Dan. I, I have my iPad. Oh, uh, right on. It, it, it helps, yeah. It, it definitely gives it a bit of a of a tack. And yeah. the drag is the drag is what you really miss, you know. Because yeah, you know, I, I know what Jeff's saying. I work on this on the Cintiq all day long, uh, you know. And and after my hands are on it all day long, I'm I'm, I'm very oily. I'm just very greasy. Uh, I know so, that's, not, that's not even he's not exaggerating. You know, you know, <laughs> you know this better than anybody. Yeah. Uh, so after a while, you know, there's literally no. It's like drawing on glass, you know. Mm -hmm. which actually, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, well, I usually have the glove, so it's just a glove. I cut the first fingers off so I can hold my pencil, and then my the last two fingers are. Right. I think they're called magician gloves or something. Like I really <laughs> it just made my hands slipperier. I just I was oh. <laughs> slipping off the board. Yeah, like I can never quite find the right angle or the right pressure or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I got used to it because it's my job, but it was it never it, it was never fun the same way that drawing on paper is. That's true. Yeah, but this I'm, is just I'm a really user. fast. Yeah. Um, hey, Jeff, do you do you do you find yourself doing this right? So you know you know uh, on the Mac, Command Z is like the greatest thing ever, right? You just el eliminate the lines you drew. Oh, you, yeah. you go from the Cintiq to drawing on an actual piece of paper that yes. you're drawing, and you do yeah. Command Z, and you're like, wait, <laughs> oh, shit. it's like, so weird. It's like such it's a weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I kept Command Z for most things in my life. Yes. Like, like oops, Command. No, I guess yeah. I didn't just run that stoplight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just don't do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, wait. It's a, it's a metaphor. It's an example. It's not real. You he guys, says, seriously. Uh, <laughs> you guys getting close to uh, the trivia question? People in the chat are wanting to know. Oh, fantastic. What time is it? Are we? Nobody how, wants to know. Who really wants to know? Seriously. Really, well, uh, people with fake names. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Satine, what, what, give us a trivia, a D and D trivia question that cannot easily be looked up online that you really have to be a D and D fan to know. What is your question? Well, I can't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you can look it up or not, but what is the name of the dragon at the Watsi headquarters? Jesus. There's, a, there's like a 20 foot dragon. Joe, do you want to feel that one? Yeah, Joe, yeah. you know that, right? I haven't a clue, guys. Yeah, <laughs> this, that's a good trivia question. All right. What is the name of the dragon at the Watsi headquarters? If you get it right first, you get this drawing sent to you. Jeff, can I, I ask you a question? Right? Yes. Do you, know, do you know the answer, Jeff? I have no idea. Oh. I got nothing. Is, you were, is it you Bill? Were talking, you were talking pretty big uh, D and D stuff there for a little while. Well, I said I'm old school. <laughs> I'm old. Um, oh. I'm going to guess Dale. That's wrong. No, it's 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 your mouth is wrong. Oh. Is it Coca Cola and baby oil? <laughs> That's the answer for a lot of. Other <laughs> I got a lot of flack for that. That's um, great. I love the callback. Nothing like callback humor. Yeah. Uh, Ronald. Is a guess or maybe an answer? Is it Ronald? This is too hard. This is too obscure. <laughs> is it Ronald? Because be. unless it's Ronald, no one's actually thrown out an answer. It starts with an M. It starts with an M. A lot of things. Big like. red dragon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See, we wanted a hard question. Yeah. Then you get the hard question. Yeah, Pete does simple. not start with an M. Pete does not start with an M. Ronald. No. Ronald. Yeah. No, I, I think Ronald. this might be too obscure. Nice. <laughs> well well you done. It, Jeff, you might be able to keep that drawing. No, no, no. So Tinka just ask an easier question. Do you have an easier question? Uh, yeah, there's a new there's a new documentary out. 
about the history of Dungeons and Dragons art. All right. Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's a movie documentary. Cool. What is it called? I don't documentary. Know. I know. Um, do you remember in Dragon Dragon Magazine um, there was a backup feature called uh, Trampy or something like no. that? Um, oh no, it was Dave Trampier who was who was the um, the artist. And it was it was the name of the strip was called Wormy. It was about a dragon, a, a worm, is this red dragon, and it was the most amazing, beautiful looking mm. like, comic book art. It was like fully painted, and sometimes he would do like three pages, sometimes one page, but every every it was it was worth buying that magazine just for whatever that guy did. And he did the he did a lot of the original illustrations for. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, all the uh, game books. Um, but then nobody knows what happened to him. For a little while, he was driving a, a cab in um, Madison, Wisconsin. What? Yeah, and I and they, oh. they don't have the copyrights to his, any of his um, his stuff. So, he, I mean, he still has it. So you can't even reprint this stuff. So this, uh, this guy's last name is which now? Trampier. Um, oh, so yeah. French, uh, you know. Yeah, there is another guy who is, did. They mentioned on that documentary. They all disappear. Yeah, I mean, I got to meet Jeff D, and I, I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I get to listen to him. That um, guy, that guy was a major influence on my early artistic. Me too. Career. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just met Easley, which was really. Oh, Jeff oh, I love his stuff. Oh, yeah. his stuff is fantastic. All right, let's see if this is. All, all right, right. Satine, that's so. Though, that's uh, a great drawing, I guess. But we're not giving it away. Uh, let me give you another one. Who wrote uh, the drag? I still got some guesses on the uh, okay. All right, we'll here. All uh, right. The Dungeons and Dragons experience. Nope. Our Eye of the Beholder. Yes. Oh. All right. Ryan All right. Barr is first Ryan. in. Okay, Ryan. Jeff, you've never liked the name Ryan. I, do, Ryan I love the name Barr Ryan. With two oh. R's. So does does Ryan win a damp and ocean drawing that he doesn't send out to him? No, it was a Jeff Johnson drawing. It oh, you know, so, so he'll actually get it from, from yeah. last week, and they're probably never going to get it. The guy, yeah, yeah. you, Carol, nice guy. <laughs> All right, Ryan, this is your drawing. Uh, wow, Jeff, you ink that entire thing. Do you see? Do you see that, Joe? You're are you inking right now or drawing? I'm inking right now. Hmm. Well, what I'm doing is not considered ink. I'm just I'm I'm drawing in pen. That's not really the same thing. It is to me. It's not really well. You're you're good at inking. I feel this like is... art college was a lie. Art college. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think we can all agree on that. Did you go to art college, Jeff? I did. I went for one semester. Oh, well, um, you told me that. And, and then I could. Well, it was a it was a horrible experience. It was figure drawing class with cigarettes, and huh? that was about it. You were drawing with cigarettes? No, no I mean we went to it was figure drawing class, but everybody was smoking. Ah. That was that's what made it college. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Did you ever go to art college? Mm -hmm. Joe? Oh, yes. Joe? Did you ever go to art college? Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah. Where'd you go, Joe? A lot of secrets I'm learning. Visual arts. Oh. I even graduated. Would yeah. you feel like what you learned there helped you when you were a comic book artist? Um, you know what helped me was the, 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 one, the one very good thing about the school is that and I think it's still true today, is that um, in order to be a teacher in the school, you have to be a working professional in, in your field that you're teaching for at least five years. Mm. So what I got out of it was incredible practical experience about what the hell happens when you leave school. You know, so um, so that was like invaluable. That was worth the price of admission, you know, so because at the end of the day, you either have talent, you don't have talent. Um, and there were some really talented people in my school that actually never made it. Uh, just it didn't work out for them. Yeah. Uh, I was I was certainly by far not the most talented person in my class. Um, and uh, but the but the advice that these artists gave, and particularly the professional illustrators, about what happens when you go and you submit your portfolio and you uh, you know hand in your vouchers if you manage to get the job. Oh, uh, man. And, that's you know. great. So the mechanics of being an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's you brilliant. Know. Yeah, they, they took great pride in making sure that you were, you know, you were ready for the world. Um, and I believe that's still true. I mean, I haven't been there in years. Uh, you know, but that was, to teach there? 
What was that? Doesn't uh, Walt Simonson? He teaches there, right? I don't know if he still does, but I know he has. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I had I had uh, Will Eisner was one of my teachers back then. What? For, wow. I'm so jealous. Yeah. But I, I was all making sense. No, but I wasn't. I wasn't a a comic book uh, major. I, I wanted nothing to do with comic books at that time. What I was the uh, there's some people who say that you know they they still feel that way about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. So when did you make the shift to comics? Um, years later, when uh, when I when I read Watchmen: Return of the Dark Knight, it's uh, oh. it's a long sort of story. But I, I got you know I read them as a kid, and then I dropped them around. The, I, mean, I started reading when I was eight. I dropped them around the age of twelve when I discovered two things: baseball and girls, and not in that order. <laughs> um, and that was for comics, you know. So I didn't. Uh, I didn't get reintroduced until to them until much later. So you know, up until that point, I was a real snob. I thought it was a you know kids' medium. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a you know big time illustrator like uh, uh, you know Rockwell and those you know the, the guys of that ilk. Um, like Fawcett, those guys. Was your first job at Valiant, it, it was it was coloring, right? You were, you were a colorist. Yeah, I got hired as a colorist yeah. at Valiant, and uh, that was crazy, man. They, they were paying colorists by the hour. What? So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's uh, this is early on when they were doing the Nintendo comic books. I'm oh, yeah. two colorists uh, with Robin. Um, now, now, mind you, this is this is 1990. I want to say so. In 1990, they were paying colorists 14 dollars an hour. Wow, uh, which was extraordinary money. And yeah. these were like fully painted books. So um, I was a little bit older than some of the other some of the, some of the, the guys that were there and gals that were there were they were literally right out of college. And they were like coloring so, I mean, it would be like molasses, just watching them color. And I'm, <laughs> trying, to get stuff. I'm trying to get pages done. And uh, and they were just milking this for all it was worth. And I'm like, guys, this isn't going to last if we keep going this slow. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't last. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we had a decent amount of money. It was a little bit of time. Yeah. That's Did you great. ever pull anything over there? Did you ever do any of the uh, Nintendo or Legend of Zelda? I did my first uh penciling when i was over there oh. uh i just did, i did a pinup they gave me a you know they gave me an attaboy and said here you go do this pinup so, thing so team you'll like this and we're gonna have to wrap it up in a few minutes but so joe's first gig at dc comics was Spelljammer, which was a tsr dungeons and dragons comic book yeah that i was, remember Spelljammer. It, that was great everybody stuff. everybody wants to bring that back i hear i get the request on the D, &D socials Bring back Spelljammer. So you worked on Spelljammer? I inked I inked Joe on uh, Spelljammer. He replaced Mike Collins. And um, wow. that's how we that's met. Yeah. Shut up. See, it's all about D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. It really is. It was a cool book. Um, he, that's how he cut his teeth. And then he went, he's like, goodbye. And then what was the next one? Um, I think I got the question, the question at DC. So oh, so Joe went from marquee anchor like myself, 21 year old, super experienced, um, <laughs> and then it's straight to P. Craig Russell. <laughs> yeah. and, and I had a page. I asked Mike Mignola to ink a page for me. Is a, a how that go? Because <laughs> so you know what? He fixed all my ter terrible drawing. It was awesome. <laughs> I felt yeah. that way about Terry Austin when he inked me on uh, on Wonder Man. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> no, he went, Joe always had great anchors. He always had, like um, Kevin Nolan. Kevin, yeah. After after uh, um, P. Craig Russell, Kevin Nolan, and then um, Jimmy. went through a whole whole series of different different great guys. Jimmy Palmiotti was thinking you. I I got left in the dust. I was like, that's was not true. You went to recently. Yeah, well, I, I, that's true. We did the Logan. Can you guys do that? Uh, the X Men stuff, that lo that yeah. Logan stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Movie. So cool. yeah. You guys are so cool. Here are our moments. Yeah. Cool. We're not. We're yeah. not. You know, being flown around the world by you know Dungeons and Dragons people like you are, but <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, that's a whole other level of coolness. I mean, it's, it's a super cool. That is seriously, that's just super cool. nerd. That's just but, super nerd. But nerd. <laughs> That's that's the way to go these days. I want right, to... like it's it's now nerd is not not a shameful thing anymore. Jeff, yeah, I was muscle. never ashamed of it. No. Well, <laughs> well, neither was I. I became a professional for God's sakes. 
<laughs> Guys, right. I hate to wrap this up. It's 6.30. Okay. Um, All right. 6.30 is. So, Satine, what's your, what's your Twitter? My Twitter is at Satine Phoenix. And that's pretty much all my socials and at Gilding Light. Awesome. Yeah, I checked out the, the Gilding Light stuff is awesome. If you can subscribe to it and check out the various videos and it, it covers a lot of like, they've already got some cool stuff on. There's going to be a lot more cool stuff. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Well, thank you so much for taking time to do this. We had, I, it was great uh, seeing you and I, I love listening to the stories. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Let's play some D&D sometime. Uh, uh, yeah, anytime. absolutely. And then tell Jeff about it while he's in uh, Oregon. Oh, that's not cool. Where is Jeff? Right. I'm in Oregon. I'm in Southern Oregon, where it's, where there's water and and, uh, and trees. Yeah. Just have water. <laughs> yeah. There was right. water today. It came out of the sky in very in pulses. It was weird. Yeah. I know. Shocking. A little right? bit of rain. It's weird. It's weird and Joe, LA. thanks for showing up. Ben, um, surprisingly quiet because of all the D and D talk. A lot of D and D talk. Yeah. Thanks for oh, thanks for taking man. care of us too. Ben is your rock, guys. Without yeah. Ben, none of this happens, man. Oh, Listen, God, we know it. it. We know the happen. truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Joe, for coming. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks to team. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Here's the team. Pleasure meeting you. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye.